Oh, yeah. All right. All right. All right. I heard that little dot go on. So it sounds like we're ready to get it started, ready to get it popping. You know what it is. <laughs> okay. Anyways, anyways, let's go ahead and start doing some distributive property problems with variables on both sides. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and straight up attack number 13. All right. So we're going to take a look at number 13 here. We're going to get it popping and hopefully we can make sure that we're on point here. Give me one second because I do need to get my little keyboard here. There you go. All right. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let me go ahead and stretch this out and we can go ahead and start doing this work. Okay. At the end of the day, our algebra needs to be on point. And so this is the type of work we got to do to make sure we're algebra is on point. We're going to have to work with variables on both sides. Okay. So first things first, in this problem, we got ourselves distributive property, okay? I hope to see it. Let me go ahead and delete this real quick. Let me go ahead and delete this, and let's go ahead and let me hit this real quick. Problems here. Let me go ahead and erase this, and let's go ahead and get this started. We got ourselves two things going on in this problem. We got ourselves the distributive property, but not just on one side. We got it on both sides of the equation, okay? I hope you see it. How do you know it's a distributive property? Because we have a number, a value 6, is being multiplied by stuff inside of a parenthesis, okay? We're going to have to multiply 6 times negative 3V, and we're going to have to multiply 6 times positive 1, all right? We're going to have to do that. But as you can see, the distributive property is also on the right side here. I hope you see it here. We're going to have to multiply 5 times negative 2V, and we're going to have to multiply 5 times this negative 2. And that's what we're going to have to do. So let's go ahead and get it started. And let's see if we could go ahead and distribute first. Distributive property because that's our first step to simplify. Okay, we got to make this easier here. Okay, now look, again, a lot of this is mental math. But if, if you ever have problems, always use a four-function calculator. I mean, these things are available to you. They're on your Chromebooks. They're on cell phones. They're your calculator applications. We just got to know how to use them. So our first thing will be six times, not three, but negative three, okay? And we end up with negative 18V. So notice, I'm going to put negative 18V because we got negative 18 for the number part, the coefficient part, okay? Let's go ahead and keep it rocking. We got six. The next step would be six times one. No, I don't think I need a calculator for that. Six times one is six, okay? And now we bring the equal sign, right? We got that line, bring it straight down, okay? Whoa, I don't know about that line, okay? You know, at the end of the day, my dexterity may not be the best, okay? <laughs> that was a really messed up line. No, that was a bad line, too. It was a bad line, too. But the point is, is the line represents the equal sign. So I'll stretch that equal sign a little bit. Anyways, let's do the other side. Let's do the, the five times negative two. Again, Five times two is 10. A positive times a negative is a negative, but we could always just do five times negative two. If you ever want to just check your work to put in the calculator, five times negative two made negative 10. Negative 10 B. Now we got five times negative two again, and we already knew that it was going to make negative 10, but that one does not have a variable. Okay. And now we're ready to solve this bad boy. Okay. We get the variable on both sides. Work with the side that has less value for the variable. And technically, it's the coefficient for the variable. I'll put that in parentheses, coefficient. We're looking at the coefficient, coefficient of the variable. I hope I spelled it right. <laughs> but we're looking for the coefficient of the variables. Now notice, I'm going to go ahead and highlight them. On the left side, we got ourselves negative 18V, okay? On the right side, we got ourselves negative 10V, okay? That's what we got on the right side. So we got two coefficients. On the left side, it's negative 18. On the right side, it's negative 10. So if we're looking at both of those values, the one with the smaller value is the negative 18. That's the one we're going to cancel out, okay? That's the it's it's just easier to cancel out the one with the smaller value because now we're going to go ahead and add 18v to both sides, okay? That's our next step. We're going to add 18v to both sides, all right? Again, left side, since that's the one that has least value, that's the side we cancel out. 
So that one on the left. Notice I'm going to get that six. I'm going to bring it straight down. Six equal sign. Okay. Now we're going to, whoa, what was that like? <laughs> I got a ghost in my classroom or something. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe uh, they see, you know, I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, okay, okay. Let's finish off the other side. We got negative 10 plus 18. Which one of these has more value? In this case, it's going to be the positives. We have 18 positives and only 10 negatives. Our answer should be positive, and it's going to be positive 8. But again, here, let me click this out. If you don't know, use the calculator. We got 10, but it's a negative 10, right? It's a negative 10. And then we're going to add 18 to it, and we end up with positive 8V. We have 8V, okay? Now we bring down the minus 10, okay? Now we have the variable on only one side of the equation. It's on the right side, and now we could use the order of operations to undo it. So the first thing we're going to do, undo, sorry, is the subtract 10. And the opposite of subtract 10 is to indeed add 10 to both sides, okay? On the left side, we get 10 plus 6 makes a total of 16. Equal sign in the middle. On the right side, we got ourselves negative 10 and 10. That canceled out. We're going to go ahead and bring down the 8V. So we have 8 times V on the right side of the equation, and we're going to multiply that by, sorry, sorry, 8 times V on the right side of the equation, and that's going to equal to 16, okay? I'm already starting to put the next step. I hope you see it. Next step should have been to divide. On the right side, we have 8 times V, so we're going to divide both sides by 8, all right? What happens to my 8s on the right side? Well, of course, these cancel out. Remember, just it's the same similar pattern, similar patterns, okay? So we have V on the right, equal sign, 16 divided by 8. Well, 2 times 8 is 16. And our correct answer for this problem, using the distributive property and variables on both sides, would be 2 equals to V. Or V equals 2. I mean, it means the same thing, okay? Let's take a look at another problem. Something a little bit, you know, a little bit, you know, a little bit awkward. But, you know, something with distributive properties. Something we could practice. And, you know, at the end of the day, we could do that good work, okay? I'm going to pick 18 just because it has letter D. And, you know, Mr. Delgado likes using the letter D because this is my name. <laughs> Some of that, you know. <laughs> right? So I just picked but I also picked it because it looked a little awkward, man. It looked a little, you know, it's a, it's an awkward, it's a hard problem. And we are all in this class responsible for being able to do the work. So we got to be able to do it, okay? I'm going to write it up again. I hope you see it, okay? First things first. Here, let me scroll down just a teensy bit as I can get this answer out of the way. There you go. There you go. First thing, I hope you see it. I hope you see it. The first thing we should do in this problem is... The distributive property, okay? That's the first thing we should take care of here, all right? Notice, we have ourselves 5. And we're going to multiply 5 times negative 6 and 5 times negative 3D. But that's on the left side. We all look at the right side. We got 3 times 8 and 3 times 7D, okay? So we're going to have to do the work. But you know what? Hard work pays off, and that's what we're ready to do. Because you know me, I'm a big fan of the hard work. So let's do it. So we got 5 times 6. Well, it's not 6. It's actually negative 6. You can always bust up that calculator. 5 times 6, but make sure it's negative. You hit equals, boom, negative 30. Okay, we got a negative 30 for our first one. 5 times 6 is 30, and a positive times a negative is a negative. Let's do the next one. We got 5 times negative 3. Well, it's 5 times negative 3D. But 5 times negative 3 will be the coefficient answer. And notice 5 times 3 is 15. A positive and a negative make a negative. But it's not just negative 15. It's going to be negative 15D. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So now we got ourselves the left side done. Now we got to focus on this side, okay? Let's do this side. We're going to do 3 times 8. You could even probably see the little multiplication table back there. You know, I got to see it right there. 3 times 8. You know, you could go scroll to the side, and you get ourselves 24, right? 24. So we see 24. 3 times 8 is 24. Now we're going to do 3 times 7. 3 times 7, okay? That's a multiplication fact. We don't have to bust it out, but 3 times 7 is 
21. <laughs> 21 D, right? 21 D. We're getting there. We're getting close here, okay? Work with the side that has less, and I'm going to put less in quotations, variable, okay? Remember, work on the side that has less variable, okay? Let me show you what I'm talking about. We got ourselves negative 15 on the left side. We got ourselves positive 21D on the right side. So which one is the smaller value? Negative 15 or positive 21? I hope you guys see it. Smaller value should have been negative 15. All right. So the opposite of negative 15 is plus 15D. All right. And I and you got to make sure you put the D. I know I didn't put it, but I'm putting it now. Okay. So we're going to add 15D on the left side. I'm going to drop my line down because whatever we do on one side, we got to do the other side, okay? So we're going to go ahead and add 15D to the right side as well, okay? Well, I got my highlighter already started here. So what happens to my 15s on the left? 15Ds on the left, they cancel. The positive and negative cancel each other out. Additive inverse property. That's how it is, okay? That's how it is. So let's bring that negative 30 straight down. Boom, negative 30. Equal sign in the middle. 24, we just bring it straight down. Notice we bring it straight down. Now let's go ahead and finish this part here. We got 21 plus 15. Now, of course, we should be able to do it by hand. But that's what the calculators are for sometimes. When we do every single thing by hand, sometimes, you know, we might, we might make little tiny mistakes. It's always good to check our work, okay? And 21 plus 15 is... 36D, right? It is 36D, right? That's what I got, right? 36, exactly. Hopefully it's making a little bit more sense. So now we have negative 30 equals 24 plus 36D, all right? I hope you notice that what we're supposed to eliminate here is the 24, all right? And it's a positive 24. But don't think it's because of this. That's not, this is not what makes it positive, okay? It's positive because there's not a symbol in front of the 24. If there's no symbol in front of the 24, it means it's positive. And the opposite of positive 24 is negative 24. So we're going to subtract 24 from both sides, okay? That's just how it is. The negatives, they're the same sign. So you add and keep sign okay and keep sign okay so we would add 30 plus 24 but again we could just use a calculator okay i'm trying to teach you how to do it in your head how to be able to do the rules right but if you don't got the rules you could always use a calculator and just check them out make sure you understand the right answer so we got negative 30 minus 24 equals negative 54 so negative 54 is going to be on the left side of the equation Equal sign in the middle. The 24 is on the right side. Let me just go ahead and highlight both of them. We cancel those out, and we're left with 36D on the right side. We're almost done. We're going to divide both sides by 36, okay? So let's go ahead and bust it out. Let's go ahead and bust it out. Now, of course, we could simplify it. You know, we could do other things like that. But, you know, of course, the calculator is there, so might as well use it. We got negative 54 divided by... 36 equals to negative 1.5. Negative 1.5 equals to the 36s again canceled out. I know I didn't highlight them out, but I hope you see it. The 36 cancels out, and we're left with the letter D on the right side. So our answer for this problem is D equals negative 1.5. Or if you want to just keep it the way it is on our problem, negative 1.5 equals D, it means the same thing, okay, guys? It means the same thing. But we got to make sure that we could do the work, okay? We're going to do one last problem. We're going to do one last problem because, you know, at the end of the day, we got to make sure that we're on point here. So let's do one last problem here, all right? I'm actually looking at attacking a problem like number 22, Okay, even though number 22 is not a distributive property, it does involve multiplying the whole equation by a certain denominator. Okay, let's go ahead and bust out that problem. I'm going to bust it out, put it over here. Let's go ahead and paste this down. Okay, let's go ahead and do it, man. Let's go ahead and do it and make sure we can get it. Okay, we got one half 
minus 5 eighths x equals 7 eighths x plus 7 halves. Woo-wee, this is an intense problem here. This is a good one. This is a good one right here. A lot of people don't like these type of problems because we're working with fractions here, okay? And again, we could turn them into decimals, but that may actually cause us more work because we would have to convert every fraction. And I, I don't think we need to do that. We got to make sure we know how to work with fractions. So I'm going to go ahead and help you out here, okay? First thing we're going to do, we're going to write 1 half minus 5 eighths x equals 7 eighths x plus 7 halves, okay? Let's focus on the denominators, okay? Let's focus on the denominators, all right? Really, to do this problem, the easiest way to set up this problem is to multiply all of the numbers by the least common denominator, the LCD. I hope you guys remember that. This is this old school. This is from sixth grade, the LCD, the least common denominator, okay? Notice we have a denominator of 2, we have a denominator of 2, we have a denominator of 8, we have a denominator of 8, and we have a denominator of 2. What we should do, the easiest way to really attack this problem is to turn them all into the same denominator, the least common denominator. So I'm going to bust this out just because I know it's been a while. What we would do is find the multiples of 2 because that's our you know smallest denominator. So 2, 4, 6, 8. Then we would find our multiples of 8, 8, 16. But we really don't need to work that hard because the least common denominator of the number 2 and the number 8, as you can see, I already highlighted them, is 8. So what we should do, really what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the halves, the ones that have a denominator of 2, I'm going to multiply them by 1, 2, 3, 4, I'm going to multiply them by 4 so we could turn them into denominators of 8. So I'm going to multiply my numerator times 4 and my denominator times 4. I'm going to multiply my numerator here times 4 and my denominator times 4. Let's do this so we could have the same denominator, okay? So notice what happens. Now I have 4 eighths minus 5 eighths x equals... 7 eighths x plus, now we got to do some work here. Okay, 7 times 4. Got to look at my multiplication chart. I see it right there. 7 times 4, 28. 28 is going to be my numerator. 28 is going to be the numerator. And, of course, 2 times 4 is 8. Notice, now that we've done that step, all of the fractions are now the same denominator. You're going to be amazed at the next step because fractions, you know, they freak people out. People have a bad time with fractions. But you're going to see what the next step for this problem is. And notice how we all have a divide by 8. We all have a denominator of 8. So to cancel it out, to cancel out the divisions of 8, we multiply everything by 8. We multiply everything by 8. Look at what happens. 4 eighths times 8 will make 4 because the eighths cancel. So 4 is just going to be the whole number. 4 eighths of 8 is 4. Let's keep it going. 8 and this 8 cancel each other out. Remember, we're kind of we're multiplying every single one of these by 8. And when we're doing that, they cancel out the denominator. So notice what happens. We have the minus. Notice my numerator is 5. It's really turning into 4 minus 5x. Let's look at the right side. We have 7 eighths x. And we're multiplying by this 8 right here. So that's why the right side turns into 7x. And the last but not least, we got 28 over 8. We multiply it by 8. The 8s cancel. And we're left with 28. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the easiest way to eliminate the fractions is to multiply by the least common denominator. And you're going to eliminate every single fraction, as we just saw right here. Now we have whole numbers, and now we could do this problem. So work with side with least variable, okay? And with the least amount of variable. Really, it's the coefficient. Work with the side that has the smaller coefficient, okay? That's what we should do. Notice the left side of the equation is now negative 5x. That's what we have on the left. On the right side of the equation, we have positive 7x. So which of these sides has the variable with the least coefficient? The negative 5. So the opposite of negative 5 is plus 5. And since we're having plus 5 and it has a letter X, we better put the letter X there. But whatever we do on one side, we got to do to the other side. Now the steps don't change, guys. The steps don't change. We just, we're just doing more work and we just practice in the work. Hard work always pays off. Notice. The five X's on the left side of the equation have canceled. They're canceled out. So I'm going to bring down the four, the four equal sign. We got seven X plus five X, seven and five make a total of 12 X. And then we just bring down the 28. Okay. And I hope you see it. It's just turning into one of the normal problems we've already done. Next step, minus 28 on both sides. We got four positives and 28 negatives. Which one do we have more of? And I hope you see it. We have more negatives. But use your calculator if you got to. I'm going to put 4 minus 28 equals, boom, negative 24. So on the left side of the equation now, I have negative 24. Equal sign in the middle and 12x is on the right side. Okay, I know I really don't have that much space, but we're almost done. We only got one more step to do. So let me scroll down. I apologize. I'm scrolling down, but hopefully you got to see that work. Last step, we have 12 times X. So the last step is to divide both sides by 12. That's what we got to do. So let's bust out the little calculator, okay? Notice, you know what? Before we even use the calculator, let me go ahead and get my highlighter, highlight the 12s. Guess what happens to the 12s? They cancel. Let's go ahead and look at the left side of the equation. We got 24, negative 24, divided by 12. And we end up with negative 2. Okay, well, I, <laughs> I didn't mean to draw that line, but it's okay, it's okay. It's all right. We end up with negative 2 on the left equals in the middle and the letter x on the right and there you go that's our answer so x equals negative two and i hope we got to practice a little bit okay i know this was a little bit of a longer video but we've got to practice some hard questions and remember hard work always pays off all right so i mean you know hopefully you get to practice and hopefully it makes sense all right so we'll see you later and i hope you guys have a great day